Trigger alert. Santa may be made fun of in this episode. This is Christmas Evil on Stinker Madness. What's that smell? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty as fuck. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty as fuck. Hey, look at me! Thrill me. If you come back in here, I'm gonna hit you with so many rights, you're gonna beg for a left. Thrill me. Beg for a left. Thrill me. Sticker Madness, I'm your host, Justin. This is the podcast about bad movies by bad movie lovers for bad movie lovers. Uh, Sam and Jackie are here. Oh, wait. No, Sam and Jackie are not here. It's just Sam. We've been stricken. We, we were we were touched by evil. Yeah, a touch of evil <coughs> has still got us. Yeah. We have been so sick. I was sick for six fucking days. Six days. Because everybody knows that follows us on Twitter and Facebook that Jackie got sick first last yeah. last weekend. Uh, she At first, we thought that she might have had the brown bag flu. Uh, she slept for six hours while we were trying to record or waiting to record. And then the next day, she fell asleep for 17 hours. Ugh. And then you got sick. I got sick immediately after le- when we weren't going to record. I went home and then I accused your your clam dip of uh-huh. being bad. Right, right. The party's clam. The Christmas party's clam dip. And I went to work the next day and I only made it till about two. And I realized it wasn't the clam dip. <laughs> I was just really fucking sick. <laughs> you know how bad that clam dip, Sam, was. It wasn't even clam dip. It was garlic dip. <laughs> oh God. Whatever it was. Well, that was the problem. As I was like, it sure it. Had- created its own clams because it sat out for too long and you ate it you were the one so we go upstairs right and he's like we'd been sitting there all night right? and it's like open in the air mostly mayonnaise and he's like it's still good There's and some he puts some on his plate and i'm it. like well you're not going to be the only tough guy here gremlins have bred out of it it's yeah. like it's it's the primordial soup that life is created from and you ate it yeah so i had some of that and it didn't treat me right <laughs> But then I got sick afterwards. Right, so. yeah. And then uh, two days later, I got fucking sick, and I was down for four days. Yeah. Jackie is still down. She's she, on stage seven. Of she being has sick. no voice. She can't speak. She can't go more than five minutes without coughing. And the, it's so bad, <coughs> the coughing is causing her to vomit because she can't stop coughing. Yeah. And she can't breathe. So you get that, like, you're choking on your own coughing. Yeah. It's horrible. I cough puked on, on Thursday. And day my day four, when I thought I was out through the most of it, I started coughing and I got into a cough fit that caused me to vomit. Yeah. So oh, sorry. So Jackie's upstairs. She's not going to be on this episode unless she decides to come by and say, Hey. But uh so we're gonna try to do this one without her. It'll be the first time she's ever missed an episode. Yeah. She has been a uh what's that called when you when you stalwart. Sh- yeah, stalwart. Yeah, there you go. Rock. Because I've missed one episode. Yeah, you missed one. And you replaced me with Mark. We don't have anybody to replace uh, Jackie with. Yeah, because everybody hates us. Yeah. Uh, so let's try to do Christmas Evil. Uh, 1978. 80. Oh, 1980? This oh, was. shit. It's got different <laughs> release dates. Because I think it's got like an official release and then like a drive-in release. Let's see what it says yeah. here. Because I thought it was 80. Yep, 80. Okay. All right. Uh, it was shot on widescreen because it was uh, on a budget of four hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. No one knows what it returns because it was a drive-in movie. Yeah, so right. Uh, and then it didn't really see a proper wide release until Troma released it on DVD in two thousand. Hmm. So, what do you think? Uh, like, say, say, what, what's what's maybe the most successful drive-in movie that's made for drive-ins? Not like it had a theatrical release and a drive-in release. Your drive-ins did it, but like made for drive-ins. Like, do you think like uh, the Fall of the House of Usher by Corman? Do you think maybe something along those lines? Probably yeah. those. I would say, yeah, the uh, Corman Ode to Pose were probably pretty big. Or maybe some Dracula. I bet you the Christopher Lee Dracula movies were successful. Weren't the Hammer films pretty much drive-in associated, or were those made for main... Those might have been made for main theaters. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we we should remember, though, that the most interesting piece of film history on releasing 
is that films all weren't released simultaneously in all markets. Uh, the first movie that really released itself all the way across the country at the same time was Billy Jack. Billy Jack. Billy Jack changed the way that films were promoted and released. As it should. Yeah. And it was badass, and he kicked people right in the fucking face. <laughs> I'm going to take this foot and kick you on that side of your face, face. and there's nothing you can do about <laughs> it. <laughs> Billy Jack is awesome. Saved the Indian children. Uh, so so do, you, so do you think 450, they could have made 450 back? I'm sure they've made four hundred and fifty thousand back. That seems like back. easy to do in a drive-in. Yeah, and that it probably aired midnight on various local television mm-hmm. stations as mm-hmm. well. So I'm sure it's done pretty well. Who knows what? Tra- I mean, Troma's probably made it pretty good off the DVD, yeah. and then uh, somebody just did a uh, <coughs> Blu-ray of it. You can get it on oh, Blu-ray wow. now. Okay. Uh, it's streaming on Shutter TV, uh, which uh, I figured out you can buy separate uh, on Amazon Prime for five dollars a month. Where Sling TV offers it as well for five dollars a month. Oh, uh, I don't know if it. I think three dollars would be like I'm going to stick around on the Shutter, but five is you're you're in Epics money, and Epics I think is a little stronger buy at five. It's bucks. one of those that I think Epics is the same way. I think that it's like once every six months mm-hmm. you do it for a month and you just run through as many of them as you can. Clean up, yeah. And then say goodbye to it pretty yeah. much. Yeah. All right. Well, are you ready to get into it? For the most part. Yeah. It doesn't star anybody. Nobody yeah, does. it does. Oh yeah, the the brother. He he goes on to be in such films as Phenomenon. Yes. <laughs> Uh, that's Jeffrey Demon, actually. Jeffrey Demon. But Brandon Maggart is the main star, and, and he's he does. For... Uh, he did this Showtime series called Brothers that was a big deal, hmm. and then there was a show he was in with Jackie Gleason after that too. So, okay. All right. they 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 were both. He kicked around on TV for quite a while, uh, and then Demon is more noted as a character actor. He's in all sorts of shit. Oh yeah, he's like uh, he's like the oh, what's that guy? God damn name, uh, the dad and. Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, yeah. Always plays a cop. Yeah, this guy plays a scientist in, in half of it. Yeah, right. But he does play detectives sometimes, too. Yeah. So. so to set the stage, film opens on Christmas Eve in 1947. And Santa has uh, decided to stop in on somebody's house. Comes in through the chimney, like Santa does. Uh, the kids are up waiting for him, watching. Yeah. But they... One of them seems to think that it's their dad, and the other one's like, no, fuck you, man. That's fucking Santa. I didn't get this at all. I just thought it was like there's some lady, they're sitting on the stairs with their two kids, they're watching Santa do his shit, Uh and she left him bread and water, because I guess Santa's a fucking convict or something (laughs) Right, right. right? (laughs) Yeah, he's uh, he's, uh, imprisoned in, uh... never mind, I don't have a place, San Quentin. Rikers Island. Yeah, Rikers Island. Bread and water every day. Every day. Uh, but she's like, oh, yeah, watch Santa do his business and then mm-hmm. go upstairs. And then uh, they go upstairs, but then the one kid comes back down and Santa's doing his business on mom. Uh, mommy is kissing Santa Claus in private parts. It's actually what's happening mm-hmm. is Santa is rubbing his fake beard on mom's knee a lot. And that seems to be it. But it seems to be very erotic for her. Like, not just, like, things are about to happen here, Santa. Like, parts are going to get intermingled. Yeah. This seems to be the climax. Oh, yeah. She, I think, is having an orgasm from knee beard movement. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I can't speak for the female genre. I, I'm not the representation yeah. of, the of their private parts, uh, but this seems to me like it wouldn't be that pleasurable. I've heard the knee is a, the secret erogenous zone. That's the knee pit. The knee pit? Yeah, you got to go on the backside. I did uh, hear at a bar once someone tell me that you should have sex with my girlfriend's armpit. Ooh. I didn't listen, <laughs> but my roommate got drunk enough and he tried it. And then he looked at me the next day and he's like, yeah, dude, that guy was full of shit. <laughs> and I just spit my drink everywhere. Like, you can't fuck. Really? 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 Oh, uh, later that uh, person went on to be a homicidal maniac. But, you know, so. whatever. It's fine. <laughs> no, I don't think you can have sex with armpits. And I don't think beards on knees are hot. But either way, this warps this child's fragile little mind. It because... does. It ruins him forever. Now, now is it? 
daddy or is it Santa Claus? It doesn't matter. It's a non-sexual act. This kid's got fucking problems. Yeah. If he sees this and this is what pushed him over the edge. No, it is a sexual act because she comes from it. Does she? Dude, you saw her She's face. just holding a plate. She looks like she's just drunk. She had steam coming out of her ears, and her eyeballs were doing that circular motion counterclockwise in different directions and going whoop, 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 whoop. It's whoop. just because she had nine hot toddies. <laughs> That's the only reason she's doing He could be rubbing his beard on the side of the fireplace, and she'd be doing the same thing. Why is the eggnog still all full, but the vodka's gone, Mom? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Christmas cheer. Ooh. Who wants me to take my clothes off again? Mom, it's just us. I'm drunk. Uh, so either way, he grows up. Uh, oh, so he runs upstairs. He's freaked out because mom's getting things happening to her uh, and goes up into the attic yeah. and finds a Christmas snow globe. Sure. And is like, fuck this shit. Christmas is over to me because I saw <laughs> something that barely constitutes as an erotic act, and my life is over. Uh, okay, I'm still. I, I, I got to go back to this man. Say you had a girlfriend, Sam, which you do not. Sure. Everybody point and laugh at Sam. Ha ha ha. Because uh, I didn't have sex with her armpit. <laughs> right? Had I done that, or we'd still be together. <laughs> if you saw. A man dressed in a red dress, because let's face it, Santa wears a red dress, uh, and had way too big of a beard and was rubbing it on uh, your girlfriend's knee, you wouldn't be like, hey, If I saw this it. happening with my significant other, it would probably it would be the end of the relationship. <laughs> it's, it wouldn't ruin my life. You wouldn't walk down there and be like, any chance at a three-way? <laughs> just, just don't even say anything. Just start <laughs> rubbing my beard on the other knee. See where the evening takes the three of us. London Bridges with Santa. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't done that? Yeah. All right. So he's like, fuck Christmas. Christmas is over. I'm done with this shit. Uh, he cuts himself. And and like, so I think there's supposed to be some symbolism about like blood and like the red of Christmas yeah, here. Maybe. And like he associates violence and Christmas together. I don't know. Either, either way. Something. So he grows up. He's He's Santa obsessed now. He has Christmas everywhere. Uh, commemorative plates of Santa. Uh, he back to backs the Star Wars holiday special uh, on loop. Uh -huh. uh, everything must be Christmas. Bing Crosby lives in his basement. That's how much this guy loves Christmas. Mm -hmm. Or or obs obsessed with it. He's not. I don't know if he loves it. Or he not. just dresses up like Bing Crosby and beats himself with oranges. Right. Right. Which is what you do when you're a Bing Crosby impersonator, right? Yeah. Bo -bo 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 -bo. I got orange peel in my nuts. <laughs> what? Uh, isn't that where you're going? No. Oh, okay. There was someone accused Bing Crosby of beating his kids with oranges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did hear about that. Which turns out I guess he didn't do it. Are you sure about that? Who knows? I don't know. Okay, so he's he's nutty. And he's spying on the neighbor kids. And he's got a naughty or nice book for, he, for naughty and nice. He's got separate books. Yeah, and he's making a list and checking it twice on these children. And he loves this one little girl who uh, is just the perfect angel. Uh, he only writes one line about her. She is a delight or something Some like that. Some bullshit, yeah. And all she's doing is just like playing with the doll. Like, yeah. It's not. It's neutral. She's not being good or bad. She's not it's helping neutral. mankind or hurting mankind. No. Yeah. Uh, however, there is this one little kid named Garcia. Garcia is a real fucking fuck up. He is a he's a dirty little bastard. Yeah, that son of a bitch. His first name is Dirty Little Johnny. Yeah, and he's in all the jokes. Uh, Santa obsessor Harry, who, his character's name is Harry, does not like Garcia. No, he he's ready to call it on Garcia, even though he's what nine nine right? Yeah, yeah. He's nine years old. Whole life ahead of him. He could change at any moment, but not according to this guy. Garcia no, this is already. He is Hitler. He may as well He's lock him Hitler. away, lock him up, and throw away the key. Yep. What did you think about Garcia? I thought he was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think. I mean, a highlight of the film for sure, but also like he's really not that bad of a kid. Uh, he just likes boobies. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. Yeah, he was playing with a penthouse. Like, <laughs> he wants okay. a lifetime subscription to penthouse. 
And the problem here is what? Yeah. Uh, he's also the smelly kid, I guess, which, you know, we all we all know the smelly kid in grade school, but I wouldn't really condemn the smelly kid. I'd just be like, no. here, uh, I've brought you some deodorant for uh, and, and bath salts for mm-hmm. Christmas. Don't eat the bath salts. But if you're going to... Um, don't eat somebody's face don't afterwards. Don't eat somebody's face afterwards, right. That is not the spirit of Christmas. Uh, so he works at a factory as well. Toy factory. A toy factory where they make the world's worst toys. They're just pieces. They're shaped plastic. Yeah, molded plastic toys. I don't even, I'm not calling them toys I'm, or molded. I'm shaped plastic. <laughs> shaped plastic. It's just plastic <laughs> in shapes. Here, play with this for, what, 20 seconds before it gets boring? Or breaks or... These are the toys that, like, your uncle gets you. Like, hey, here, I got you this dump truck that doesn't do anything. The wheels don't move. The truck doesn't dump. It's just a glob of what used to be a rubber. It's just a shaped plastic. Shaped plastic, right. Here's the, like, you can hit somebody with it, but then you'll get in trouble. Uh, 50 cent toys at this point in time. I bet you now these toys are probably still like uh, two bucks. I don't even think they make toys this shitty anymore. This shitty? Okay. Yeah. Like the dollar store wouldn't even have toys no. this shitty? Wow. That's shitty. Yeah, these are crap. <laughs> like whatever toy store he worked for went under. He's not doing, he's not, he's not contributing to the joy of Christmas for children because he's making the world's worst toys. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the men don't like him there. No. The Union Joes. He's also just received a promotion. Right, right. He he was a line worker, but now he's the bookkeeper. I don't really know. And there's not any assembly on most of these. Like, there was an airplane that's two pieces of molded plastic. Uh-huh. But there's these soldiers, or soldier-shaped pieces of plastic. Uh-huh. They just stand and watch them go by, because there's nothing you can do to them. Uh, I guess we'll just let the conveyor belt take them to the end. Yeah. Where there may or may not be boxes that they go in. Join the Teamsters, huh? To stores that aren't going to sell them because they're total crap. Uh, so anyways, they don't like him. They're like, hey, hey, doofus, you suck. You like Christmas too much. Why don't you take my shift? I've got... Uh, oh, his wife and him are going <laughs> to leave early to go to some bullshit place, right? Uh-huh. So he convinces him to take the shift. Right, right, right. But he doesn't... He doesn't uh, go do his family thing he just goes to the bar he pulls a homer simpson goes down to mo's and gets drunk and i was like oh my boss is a tool bag he uh, took my shift and yeah. he's an asshole and uh i'm not getting paid right now yeah, okay good job i guess uh, you're a real clever guy so he goes home harry after seeing this mm-hmm. he witnesses the guy at the bar and he loses his shit on a ken doll like yeah. He is like, oh, Christmas, 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 to a Ken doll. Okay. And he goes to his brother's house. He stalks his brother. Yeah. Watches his brother and his wife bone down on the couch. Yeah. Uh, Which makes him no different than Garcia. Right. Right. Actually, Garcia is a decent kid that likes Penthouse. He's watching his blood relative have sex. Against their will. Like, like the people in yeah, penthouse are like, peeping. here, look at penises going to my vagina. Yeah. Uh, these people do not want his brother to uh, watch that. No. That's gross. Yeah, he's, this, bad. he's a bad he's guy. He's a bad guy. Uh, so, also gross. <laughs> and gross, yeah. <laughs> he's invited to dinner. He cancels. He's like, I can't come to dinner with you guys. I just watched you bone, and I liked it. Mm-hmm. And uh, also Christmas. <laughs> I've got plans. I can't I can't make it. And he's stitching together a Buffalo Bob Santa suit. Like he goes all Buffalo Bob, but instead of skin, he's using actual material to make a mm-hmm. fucking uh amalgam Santa suit that he may or may not wear at some point. And he paints up his van with a sleigh. Because he's got a pitching van. It's it's yeah. basically Buffalo Bob's van. Yeah. Could you help me with this couch? If you would have painted a wizard on it, he would, you know, it would be the best van ever. He would uh, be Mark Hamill's van from Corvette Summer. Yeah. Actually, it was Andy no, Watts' van. But... There wasn't a wizard on it, though, was yeah. there? No, there was a lady getting boned or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, that's not going to get you pulled over. She was a prostitute. She wasn't. She was aspiring to be. Well. Didn't work out. Yeah. She tried it once. Didn't even go through with it. Falls in love with Mark Hamill. Heart of gold. Heart of gold. <laughs> Annie Potts. Uh, so he, he's going a little bananas. You can already see what's going on here. He's wanting to be Santa. Yeah. And uh, he runs into these kids again, the neighborhood kids. And Gar- he's like, what do you guys want for Christmas? Because the kids love him, kind of. Like, he's like the town. He's the village child. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a mind of a child. And Sally's like, I want dolls because that's what girls want in this stereotypical world. And Garcia's like, I want a life house subscription to Penthouse. Yeah. I like their boobies. And Harry's like, no. No, Garcia. No! Yeah, we should end your life now. Yes. Because you like titties. Right, so he goes to Garcia's house at night, and he's stalking it, but he leaves a weird mud face print thing on the wall. Like, that's gonna, like, it's a curse or something. I don't even know what he's doing. He's being a weirdo. He's being a fucking weirdo. Like, he's not going in and murdering them. It's like he's marking it for later so he doesn't forget, but he already knows that he hates Garcia, so I don't know... What the point of any or of this is? Or like is it a, a, like a like a a warning to Garcia? Like turn your life around, or mud face yeah. guy is gonna get you. Just gave you the mud kiss. You know what that means. Uh, I'm afraid I don't. If you came outside of your house and somebody had made a muddy sort of face print on your, what would you do? Wash it off. Yeah, wash it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, eh, fucking. <laughs> Figure out who did this. <laughs> Some other warn time. the police that something <laughs> worse is going to happen with them at one point or another. But he gets spotted. He gets spotted by Garcia because they're leaving him and his mom. And uh, he sneaks into the bushes and Garcia's like, mom, mom, there's something in the bushes. Now, shut up, Garcia, you little fucking awful child. I hate your guts. You're the reason your father left. He went out to get a pack of smokes and never came back. And it's all you, Garcia. But later, Garcia's dad's in it. Right. But she's acting like she's saying, I don't know what she's doing. She's like, this is my only night to go out, you she little son of a bitch. She shit out of his face. Yeah. Where's she going to go with Garcia? I don't know. It's my only night to go out, so you're coming with me, kid. She's going to wait in the car while she hangs out on the bar for about six hours. Yeah. Okay. Which was not unheard of at that time. I guess that's true. Hmm. And then he, Harry is now making silver, he's melting down silver and making silver nutcracker soldier things. Did this go anywhere? I don't think it, it did. It did. Like, I thought he was, like, making, like, his, these were going to be, like, weapons for his. Right, right, because he was going to kill werewolves or Battle something. to save Christmas against Garcia. The werewolf. Because he needs silver to. Well, I think Garcia would probably have to turn into something bigger than a nine-year-old. <laughs> To make it much of a battle. <laughs> the horror. Yeah. The six foot tall nine year old. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> now it's a fair fight, I guess. <laughs> Still a child, but big. <laughs> but big. <laughs> now that's a movie. It is a movie. It's called Big. Yeah, yeah there you go. It's weird. Uh, so <laughs> that goes nowhere. Uh, there's a Christmas party at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, you think he'd be happy about it, but he's disgruntled about corporate ethics at <laughs> Christmas time. They, they've got a charity, this, this toy factory that he works for. There's like one of those men in tie guys like, Hey, I'm the up and coming young speedster. Mm-hmm. I'm rising up through the ranks. Everybody likes me. I've got a degree from Harvard business school and you're no good with all your experience. Old guy that's worked here his whole life and I'm getting paid more than you are. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I've set up a foundation for children's charity, but I'm not donating as much as the company could yeah. into it. And Harry loses his shit about yeah. this. <coughs> like, how dare you do that? They're donating something, Harry. Exactly. Uh, there's no obligation to do that at all as a corporation. Any amount of money being donated is a good thing. He's going to be pissed off either way. It doesn't matter. Because of this guy? Just well, just because it's not being donated to stop Santa from boning mom's <laughs> fund, everything's going to piss him off. 
<laughs> that's the only charity he's really concerned about. Yeah, I, I like I like the children's hospital and all, but uh, have you guys heard about this other charity? We yeah. want to give it a try. It's, uh, it's about not having your mom be bowed by Santa's y- beard. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, toys um, make kids happy, but the gift that keeps giving <laughs> is having your mom not get boned by Santa. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say, Harry? And also, you're fired. <laughs> yeah. At this point, if they've already gotten this guy into middle management, right. I'm sure they've heard this shit before, right? <laughs> yeah, they're running a loose operation. Oh. Right? Which, I mean, if you're making those shitty toys, you oh, take yeah. the talent you get, right? Exactly. So he steals a bunch of toys from the factory, yeah. breaks in, kites all their toys, and... uh He super glues a fake beard on, so now he's committed Mm -hmm. to being Santa. There's no turning around once you super glue the beard on. No, the the, the, uh, paint is set on the van. Yeah. He's put the beard on, now he's ready to go. And he starts breaking into houses of good children, I think, and starts leaving toys under the tree for him. Uh, He tries to go through the chimney at one point. Doesn't work. No. He's too big. He's too big. No one can actually go up and down a chimney. At all? No, they're always too small. They're like, it's usually like a, a 12 to 18 inches wide. What if you're a small man? What if you're Gilbert Godfrey? I don't even think if you're nine, you can make it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Either way, I, I have some questions about, about Santa. Plus, there's the flu, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't get you can't past get that. You can't get past that. Right. And we can't get past the flu either. Still no, apparently we had to stop recording for a week because of it. It's not the flu, it's the flume. 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 Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, dipshit. All right, so he's leaving toys. Uh, he leaves by the front door, which is okay. Uh, he goes to Garcia's house again, and he leaves a card that basically says, you suck, Garcia. You're an awful person, but bye. I'm not really going to do anything to you, just Fuck off, yeah. Garcia. But he is going to give him the one gift that keeps giving. Not boning his mom? Exactly. Right. Okay, good. Um, even though she's probably ready and willing, because uh, she only gets so much action on her one night out a week, you know? But he already watched his brother have sex that week, so he's good. Yeah, he's good for that. Okay. Yeah. So he's off to the mental hospital for children. Mm-hmm. He's uh, going to give them toys. Goes through this big rigmarole with the security guards who are like, uh, you're not on the schedule. Also, it's two in the fucking morning. Mm-hmm. But who can say no to these great toys? <laughs> uh-huh. I've never said no to Santa, and today's not going to be the day I do. They're thrilled. It's the best Christmas ever. He has made the orphans uh, quite happy. Yeah. So good for him there. Uh, he goes to church where his boss is at, and then proceeds to stab three dickheads in the face yeah. that are not related to him in any way, shape, or form. No. Rando murders. Who are just being like, oh, hey, Santa, you are so not 20th century. Mm-hmm. You're not cool, Santa. We're into, like, Andy Warhol now. Yeah, if you were a neon picture of Santa, maybe. Yeah, and made of cocaine, then you'd be cool. And he's like, fuck you, Santa is cool, bitches. Here's a toy soldier in your eye. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't do anything to his boss, who has basically told us that he's ruining Christmas by not giving enough. Yeah. But he's still probably open to the idea that maybe next year they'll donate to the Don't Bow My Mom. This is just a, a like a promotion to that foundation. Like, hey, I'm going to stab people in the face. Merry Christmas. Don't bow my mom, Santa. Sure. All right. Oh, makes sense. I uh, sees another Christmas party. He gets invited in, and it's awesome. The ladies love Santa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's the he's he's a he's a hit. He's the tops. He's quite a dancer. It's light on his feet, and it's all going great. Like Santa, you got to come back next year. We want you at this Christmas party every time until he threatens all the small children that uh, he's going to murder them in their sleep if they're not good. Yeah, which is a no no. Uh, bad bad way to. You know, shift a. It's the it's the wrong gear shift at the party. It's a social faux pas, you might say. Yeah, it's going from fourth to reverse. <laughs> Gonna fuck up the transmission. So they're like, yeah, "I think it's time for you to go, Santa. You've had enough eggnog." Uh, he drives to his coworker's house, and 
Oh, this is where he tries to go down the chimney. But he, yes, he, he tries try. to go down the chimney at the coworker who he's covered his shift. Right, the shift trader. And this guy, him and his wife have made some odd decisions okay. over the course of their marriage. All right. Because they've got twin beds, but they've <laughs> stuck them, they've moved them next to each other. So maybe this is like the original sleep number. Oh, could be. Yeah, you just like get the mattress you want, she gets the mattress you he want. She likes hard, she likes soft. Soft and yeah. yeah. And, uh, Try not to screw in the middle because it'll wedge out and you'll both fall through. <laughs> that would be comedy gold. Comedy gold. It only happens once a month with these two. Yeah. Well, maybe. Mm. Uh, so he doesn't fit in the chimney, but he goes in through the downstairs window. He leaves some presents, which is nice. The kids see him. The the, the guy, yeah. the parents, uh, children are like, oh, hey, it's Santa. Cool. Uh, thanks. You're a nice guy. Uh-huh. He goes in. He's like, hey, Frank. Uh, die. Yeah, kills him. With his toy bag. Smothers him. Smothers him. And then cuts his throat so hard that Frank flies across the bed onto his wife. Uh Uh-huh. Who wakes up and freaks out. Can't scream. Then he leaves, says goodbye (laughs) to the kids, and realizes that he's done one worse. He doesn't realize this, but he should. That he... Boned? So, yeah, no, killing dad is worse than boning mom if you're Santa. Those kids are really going to be deadly Santas when they grow up. Oh, so it's like he's he's creating his own cult, like he's Charlie Manson. Maybe. Okay, all right. I don't know about that theory. I don't know about that either, but these I, I would rather have Santa bone my mom than kill my dad. Probably, probably. I I, I think I'd rather just have Santa not show up. Like, presents aren't that cool. Like, I mean, ooh, socks. I don't need socks. I mean, who wants socks for Christmas? I would like socks for Christmas now. Oh, you, so you're willing to risk Santa coming into your house and A, either boning your mom or killing your dad for socks? Now. <laughs> <laughs> They've had good lives. And I'm running a little low on socks, to be honest. <laughs> Money can't buy socks. <laughs> Money can't buy socks. You get go to the Walmart, get the mayonnaise, forget the socks every time. <laughs> so it's finally Christmas Day. Uh, his brother really is like, where the fuck is he? He's here every Christmas, but suddenly this year he's finally fucking snapped. I don't know yeah. why, but he's not with our with us on Christmas Day. He sees murder report on the news, like, oh, hey, these guys got stabbed outside of a church, and then sure. another guy got his throat cut so hard that he flew on top of his wife, <coughs> even though they were sleeping in different beds. Uh, and the city has been told to avoid Santa. If you see Santa, don't go near Santa. Santa is public enemy number, number one. one. Versus the usual Christmas where, like, you just probably should avoid him because he's going to grab your butt. Or put his beard on your knee. That's if he's invited. <laughs> so he's like a vampire? Yeah. <laughs> he can't come in if he's not invited? Exactly. Okay, fair enough. But if you invite him in, get ready for beard on knee. <laughs> it's going to be weird. It's going to fuck up your life. Uh, so he wakes up. Harry wakes up inside his van outside the factory. And he goes in there, he breaks all the toys, he's like, fuck this place, he runs the conveyor belt so that they fucking, the toys pile up at the end of it, like, whoa, he's really destroyed there. There company. should be no toys left. It's Christmas Day. Christmas Day, they should be out of toys, buildings clean. When they come back from a week break, it's mostly maintenance on equipment. Have you seen these toys, Sam? Uh, there is much more supply than there is demand. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> <coughs> And the cops are looking for him. They're they're giving business to all the Santas. They've got the Santa lineup at the fucking uh, cop station. Like, now you say the line, ho ho ho. Oh god! You say the line, ho ho ho. <laughs> A Santa lineup. Yeah, get Benicio del Toro in there. Like, give me the fucking money. <laughs> Just usual yeah. suspects, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's a reach for a joke, but um, yeah. I got there. You know, he's really like, like a real-life Santa in traffic. Benicio Del Toro? Well, not real life, because it's a movie. Oh, okay. Remember when he buys the kids the baseball field at the end of traffic with the drug money? Yeah, yeah. 
That's a Santa thing. That's a Santa thing. Traffic has the true meaning of Christmas. Did Garcia grow up to become Benicio Del Toro? He may have. Yeah, that's cool. Gone back to Mexico. He's one of the coolest guys I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Garcia. So here he calls his brother. He's like, uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna make it, uh, cause, uh, I finally figured out how to play my tune. Yeah. What tune, Harry? The tune I've been trying to play my whole life. I've finally figured it out. Is it Jingle Bells? Uh, you've what's reached the... the harmony of the universe? Thank God. What's what's the movie trying to say with this tune business? Not sure. Okay. So we're just going to skip that? Uh, I... <laughs> It's his Christmas song. It's 2112 by Rush, isn't it? I would go with the trees. Okay. Yeah. We do, we, we already did that one. I know, but it's awesome. Okay. Right. song is awesome. They have more than one song. Sam. I know, but I like to push that one because everybody forgets. Okay. I also like to do 2112 at a bar because it's 21 minutes and 12 seconds. Long. On the jukebox. Yeah. Nobody can else just can like, play a song for 21 yeah. minutes. It's nice. a real dick move. <laughs> That's what everybody's like, oh, God, that's what they do. They're like, oh, no, this is going to be like 20 minutes long. And then like three minutes, they're like, I fucking love this song. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, so he slides off the road in his van. He's going to go out, do some more murdering, I guess. I don't know. Uh, he slides off the road and his van stuck. And so he goes on foot up the street. And there's kids that have surrounded him. They're like, Santa, Santa. Uh, it is you. It's really you. The parents come around the corner. They're like, my God. It's the Santa. We're told to avoid Santa at all costs. And rather than really feel the situation out, one guy who I assume to be Garcia's father uh -huh. just pulls a knife. Right. He's ready. It's fucking go time, Let's Santa. Let's dance, Santa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, do, they do that fucking uh, thing where they have a rope and they both have to hold oh, yeah. onto it from beat it, you know, the, mm -hmm. or, you know. Uh, yeah, it's go time with Santa, and this guy is not good because the kids are like, you don't fuck with Santa. This is our favorite person in the world. Yeah. If you want to get to Santa, you got to go through us, uh -huh. dad with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm willing to try it. Uh -huh. Mom's like, don't do it. That's my baby. We got to get him away from Santa. And uh, so they tussle, the knife falls to the ground, and the little girl picks it up, and she's like, I'm going to fucking cut you, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. <laughs> and she gives it, but she gives it to Santa, who then just chucks the knife and runs away. Uh -huh. He's been all about murdering people. He's got Garcia's dad right there. The sole root of, of this year's calamity, this Christmas calamity, could end it all, and he chooses to run away. He does. Okay. At which point... The remaining parents shout to other people who immediately form a fucking torch mob. Right. Uh, this is shot in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. So I think this is like so really gives us a this is the just Tuesday in Pittsburgh. 1980 Pittsburgh. This is what you could have happen to like uh, children threatening their parents with switchblade knives sure. uh -huh. and torch mobs elevate that escalate that quickly. I, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Wasn't it Pittsburgh that there was the traveling robot? <laughs> the traveling robot. Yeah, so there's this robot. It was like the you know travelocity gnome, but there okay. was like a message in a bottle. Basically, they sent this robot all the way around the world just on goodwill. If you got it, you would send it to another city. And this robot traveled all the way around the world, and it made it to Pittsburgh, and somebody curb stomped it. <laughs> Oh, my God, that's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> and it was like a talking robot, too. It was like, I love you. And they're like, what the fuck? Kill, die. <laughs> oh, Steeler Nation. He was wearing a Steeler's jersey. And they still stopped him? No, the, the guy the, that the killed stopper. him was wearing, yeah. Uh, I've heard some things about Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Uh, I don't know. They've done some good environmental work. They have. It's a beautiful city. Yeah, the three rivers are very clean now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, anybody listening to Pittsburgh, tell us, uh, tell us if you're safe or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, the, the mob chases him, uh, the torch mob, and he runs back to his van. He guns it loose, which is not a thing. You can't gun it loose from being stuck. You just make it worse. And he drives over to his brothers, and he's like, hi. I'm fucking Santa Claus. 
I, I don't know what my motivation is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffalo Bob, basically. And uh, watch me put my wiener in between my legs, give myself a nice mangina. Uh, and the brother's like, I knew it was you. I saw the reports on the news. I knew it was you. So I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and throughout the movie, his brother seems like a neurotic dickhead to begin with. Yeah, he's a little agitated. And uh, now he's over the edge. So it's like, I guess the the knee beard thing did it to both of them. Yeah, maybe. I guess they're both over the edge. But uh, yeah, he he goes all the way. He he thinks he has killed his brother. And his wife just stands there and watch. And she's like, uh. Yeah, it was going to happen one day. Right. Uh, oof. Which means she's not going to climax anymore. Yes. Because she knows that he was watching. Right. Yeah, that's the only way she gets out. That's, like, that's the only way she rounds home. Play. That beard was making her hot. Uh-huh. God, if only that was on my knee right now. Mm-hmm. So he drags him to his van, but he's not dead. Harry's not dead. He's still alive. Uh, what's? I guess his brother was just going to put him in the van and call the cops and be like, hey, I killed the murderer. It's my brother. Uh also, I killed. Uh, this is Pittsburgh. Yeah. He's probably just gonna drive him to the river and shove the van in and oh, see what happened. Be. Yeah, yeah. But he's not dead, and he just punches his brother right and square in the face, and then drives away. Yep. <laughs> and the torch people find him. They've they've managed to travel all the way down to where his brother lives, which we have no idea the distance. Uh, and they're like, "Get him, rabble, rabble, rabble!" And he's like swerving all over the road, and the brother runs out to like see what's going on and <coughs> he falls down a hill yeah and, and when he looks up harry has crashed his van through a guardrail yeah on a bridge on a bridge and is now flying across the sky he's flying flying back to the north pole i guess he has become santa, santa. He flies into the moon. He flies. Now, this isn't, yeah. this isn't like his van flies off the road and crashes. No, it fucking flies under its own power, and he flies off into the sky. The van flies away into safety. The end. The end. Uh, so, the first question I have is, is he Santa? I'm going to assume he is because the van can fly. Or is this like in his mind? Like maybe he... Santa's like Dalai Lama. Okay. And the sitting Santa had just died, and he's in, inherited the spirit of Santa, and he's Santa in the next one, but he's already been pushed over the edge. So he's gonna the, the next thirty years of Santa are gonna be a little rough. <laughs> like. <laughs> Lump of coal isn't going to be the thing that happens if you're bad. So there's no way that this this whole him flying into the sky is just in his mind, and he actually crashes, and it, the van explodes, and he dies. It's shot from his brother's perspective. <laughs> That's exactly right, Sam. And actually, not even just his brother's perspective. It's shot from the third-person perspective. The van flies away. He is fucking Santa. Yes. So that leads me to my first question. How do we fight this Santa calamity? <laughs> what sort of weapons do we need to bring this guy down? <coughs> like, is this is, I don't think the National Guard's going to be able to do it. To take Santa out? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Oof. Well, oof. so you, well, you think he's immune to bullets? Maybe we, I mean, he might just be too squirrely flying around in that thing to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I've seen that South Park episode where the uh, uh, Al Qaeda shoots a RPG and takes well, this out Santa's sleigh. You know, this is also the uh, Pennsylvania state militia in yes. 1980. Right. Now, what are the surface to air capabilities that they have here? <laughs> I think it's it's mostly conventional. And I don't know that they got heat seekers or anything like that. So this is this is rough. <laughs> got a scorpion, MK two. Yeah, heat seeking. No, they're going to be shooting at him with tanks. Detector. Yeah, blowing up their own town. Right. Yeah. Pittsburgh has been exploded. We've got only one choice to take Santa out. We're going to have to drop the big one. Yeah. On our own people. We're at DefCon seventeen. It only goes up to five. One city or the whole goddamn planet. You have to ask yourself that. <laughs> this is like Santa Lamity. <laughs> Santa Lamity. 
so when did he become Santa? Was he always Santa? No, I think he becomes Santa a, a, about halfway through killing the third guy. That's how. That's the ticket to <laughs> take Santa's job. Well, see, I think that over... Santa, the actual Santa, just dies. So because he's old. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so he inherits the Santa magic, but uh, because he's the only person wearing a Santa suit this late on Christmas Day. Well, they had chosen him before he tipped over the edge. They didn't know. Oh, that he was a loose screw. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's like it's like Publishers Clearinghouse. They show up with a big check and say, uh-huh. "You're Santa." My God, we've made a terrible mistake. A terrible mistake. <laughs> uh, the problem is your name's already on this check, so uh, congrats. <laughs> Maybe uh, maybe Santa is elected by Republicans. hey <laughs> Then he just would have grabbed some butts, and that's about it. <laughs> Made bad tax plans. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what does Santa do if people don't have a fireplace? Comes in the back door. Does he? Back He's a door back door Santa. man. <laughs> Those are the houses where, you know, you want to see some fucked up kids. Uh, who? <laughs> the backdoor Santa kids. Backdoor Santa kids, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he just lets himself in? What if the door's locked? I, you're, I think you're, you're living in South chimney. Central. Yeah, I don't know. So he fits through the door lock with his toys bag. Kids never question this? No, we asked this because I, well, there was a period of my life that I lived in Southern California. When I was very young, and there ain't a fucking fireplace no, in the city, right? No, it's all air conditioning. It's like, what's, if it gets colder than 60, people lose their shit. Correct. Uh, yeah, he comes in the back door. He just is like, hey, everybody. Nobody notices the door opening, closing, the alarm system going off. Santa's got a key. Oh, and a, and a code that he puts in. Boop, boop, the Santa code. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, he shouldn't tell anybody what the santa code is if it bypasses all the security systems that could lead one to two three way. four five yeah. <laughs> the santa my code. god that's the same combination i have on my luggage <laughs> password one that's how you get in the president's email <laughs> yeah exactly okay i think i'm out of questions i'm out of questions too <laughs> this is a really short movie is the it is thing. a short movie I and it's 75 minutes it also just it's sort of a short story too, mm-hmm. so there's there's not a lot to uh, obviously talk about because we're at minute forty eight. We've already discussed the entire nuances of the movie. We have some other things to talk. Oh, about. Oh, we do absolutely. Okay, so let's get to the big one. Does it capture the true spirit of Christmas? I don't think so. I don't think it does. It it wants to, but it doesn't. Santa. The only benevolent thing that Santa does in this entire movie is when he goes to the children's hospital. And I think his motivation is too selfish is to just get back at his boss. Yeah. Who hires these dickhead union guys fresh off the fucking. Well, they're not even union guys. They're Harvard business school guys. And and he's always getting churned down for the good jobs, and he's he's got his big promotion, and it's a fucking three percent raise, and he had doubled his work. So it's just revenge. Yeah, like fuck you for not contributing to these children. I'll teach you a lesson, corporate greed. And the only thing that happens with family is he watches his brother pork his wife. That is definitely not the spirit of Christmas. Definitely not it. Uh, If that's the spirit of Christmas, I am through with Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) New things. So, no. uh, No, this does not. uh, I think we're even now. I think we found three that did capture the spirit of Christmas and three that have. We've gone three in a row that haven't. Yeah. Uh, Final recommendation, Sam. (sighs) I am on the fence with this one because, like, until the van flies away, that was so weird that it was like, okay, this kind of brought it back into do. But I thought it was immensely boring for the most of it. Yeah. Uh, I I actually struggled with this one. It is a conundrum because I'm, I'm with you in the same boat. You're just sitting there like, why are we doing this on Stinker Madness? Like, this is just a mid dribble. Uh, nothing is going on that's that interesting Christmas movie until the fucking van flies off the edge and you're like, that's bananas. What? Is he Santa? 
So it is it is a tough call. You gotta sit there for a long time to get to the good stuff, but so I gotta I still gotta give it a do. Give it a do. I'm giving yeah. it a fifty one percent do. Yeah, right over the edge. Uh shutter.tv if you want to do that. On uh, streaming do's and dose this week. Uh we've got uh one big one that I want to touch on briefly since it is sure. the holiday season. Jackie and I watched this. It's currently on Amazon Prime with Rift Tracks, of course. Okay. It is insanity. It's called I Believe in Santa Claus. I have not seen this. Uh, you are going to. Next year, okay. without a doubt, this is my fucking Christmas pick. This is the worst Christmas movie I've ever seen. Ooh. And I'm curious to know whether it captures the true spirit of Christmas. But anyways, it's a French TV, or made for TV movie, uh, dubbed English, which is weird because I think they wrote two scripts, all with French actors, and they wrote an English version, an English translation without doing the translation and then dubbed that English translation script because they're songs. They're singing and dancing in this movie. And songs, when they're translated from a foreign language, really kind of break their flow. They don't rhyme. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the translation just doesn't work or the meaning of the song is completely lost and it becomes nonsense. These are Christmas songs that have been written for this movie and then sung in English, dubbed sure. over whatever they're fucking singing about in this movie. So it's really weird in that aspect, but what essentially it boils down to is a child who wants to find Santa Claus. So he hijacks an airplane and flies to the North Pole, which is now in Finland, freezes to death, and then almost is eaten by an ogre and then has to... Send Santa and a magic fairy woman who is hot uh, into South Africa and free his parents from uh, guerrilla hostage uh, militants. Huh. That is the movie. I make none of it up. Wow. It's bonkers. That and I love every fucking second of it. Get out. Stop what, it's, stop what you're doing. Go watch this Rift Tracks. They're one of their hottest, and this is just prime material for it absolutely love i believe in santa claus <coughs> my do and don't of the holiday season uh-huh. is going all right up front say do unless you really fucking like dragons okay i did the christmas dragon i didn't know that was a thing yeah so those people that make all those dragon movies out of salt lake right 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 that you are the only one that watch uh, I think Jackie watched at least half of those okay, movies all right. um the, the other ones are like uh dragon Fire. No, it's not Curse even of the Dragon. Curse of the Dragon Slayer, Slayer. Birth of the Dragon Slayer. Right, they were all on Netflix a while back. And I think they're all on Amazon now. Okay, all right. And I watched this one on Amazon. And it's called The Christmas, the Christmas Dragon. Dragon. Okay. And it does in fact carry the true meaning of Christmas okay. all the way through the film. All right. It just stinks. And there's really not that much <laughs> dragon in it. So, why is there a dragon in it at all? Uh so it's set in uh some ambivalent world where St. Nicholas is dying of not having enough children believe in him or something okay. like that. Okay, so he's Thor. Uh-huh. And uh, an orphan starts spreading the word in the orphanage, and they all leave before they're sold into sexual slavery. Oh. And uh, find a magic rock that has something to do with a dragon, save a dragon, and then go on a merry adventure to save Christmas. Via the power of dragon? Via the power of Christmas. Okay. The dragon is like an like an adolescent dragon. It barely helps. So basically what you're telling me is they wanted to make a Christmas movie that had a dragon in it. And they did. Okay, all right. And it stinks. Okay, don't do it. Unless you really like dragons. And if you really like dragons, it'll be a little disappointed because the dragon... Doesn't weigh heavily into the plot. I want to uh, get into one that we watched, Sam, that you have been had on your list for some time. Uh, we are almost, we're almost we actually considering doing episodes on these. There's four of them to choose from. We already did a streaming do's and don't on it when Jackie and I watched it. But you recently finally got to sit down and watch Ator the Fighting Eagle. Yes. The first one. The very first Ator. The very first Ator. Out of four. Now, maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with Ator. Uh, I'm sure probably we're probably 50-50 with the listeners, but yeah. it's essentially a shitty Conan knockoff, right? 
Italian. It was, but at the same time, it was a really high budget for an Italian. Yes, fantasy, shitty film. fantasy. This was supposed to be like a pipe it in and make all the cash deal. Yeah, the music is fantastic. Uh, the sets, uh, the locations are great. Yeah, uh, it's really not shot that poor. The costumes are god awful. The costumes, the hair. The makeup, acting, the effects, the acting, the plot. There's a plot. Um, you know, I'm not real sure. <laughs> I yeah. So what did you think? I was astounded at how little happened in the movie, to the point that I loved it uh-huh. because I'm just like, you're fucking kidding me. This is it. Nothing is going on. Nothing is going on except like. Marrying your sister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that does kind of go down. Uh, and then a non-adventure to save your sister wife. Right. But then you're like, oh, his d- d- sister wife got stolen? Well, that must be a real adventure, stealing her back from the villains. Uh, it's not. But it's not boring either. No. It's inability. It's incompetence is mesmerizing yes that's what the ator is it's incompetence is mesmerizing that's all i can say about it do you think it's an episode sam <sighs> probably i mean i don't know it's like it's almost i think that maybe you do all four of them and do like an ator retrospective episode yeah maybe oh i don't know i don't know because i've only seen the first one i'd like to get into the the three other ones i've heard that three is Real bad. Yeah. Well, according to friend of the program, Carl, the first one is the best. Oh, are you uh, best quality or best enjoyment level? Enjoyment level because of its sheer incompetence. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I like Ator the first one, the Fighting Eagle. I think it's a lot of fun. I give it a do. Yeah, it's a, it's a total do. Uh, it's on Prime right now. Yes. Uh, it didn't used to be. It used to be only on YouTube, and it was a shitty rip. So uh, totally revisit Ator the Fighting Eagle if you have seen it before, but it was on a shitty rip uh or if you have it total do last but not least sam we're gonna break the mold on streaming do's and don'ts a little bit yes uh we are going to talk about a television show quite possibly the not greatest television show <laughs> ever made <laughs> we were just talking about a film called ator that is sheerly and purely incompetent and that spirit right has been maintained by the French, Canadian, and Mexican makers of the 1991 series Tarzan. Tarzan. Tarzan? Tarzan? Tarzan. Uh, it's got an accent, Mark. Yeah. But it's just Tarzan. 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 Uh, yeah, it's Tarzan. And Jane. Yes. And they don't do anything. Like, like, because you well, take James... any TV show, and it's like, uh, so it's this this guy with a bitch and fucking van and a mohawk, and this other cool guy, and this old guy, and then this kind of crazy guy, and they're kicked out of the military, and they fight crime. Uh, or there's, like, this really cool-looking guy with a mustache and Hawaiian shirts, and he's got a fucking Ferrari, and he lives at his butler's house or something like that, and he solves crime. Uh, there's... Uh, this author and she types stuff and yeah. she goes to parties and like everybody always gets murdered around her and then she solves crime. Uh huh. This is Tarzan and Jane. Well, they've got friends. I don't know what they do. Well, Jane's supposed to be doing a research project. Yeah, she does research. On what? I, I have no idea. Don't have a clue. And they're, because of her research, is being funded by. This guy, the guy like shackles his kid to her as a research assistant. So it's not just Tarzan and Jane. It's Tarzan and Jane, Roger, (laughs) Roger, and this other this teenager who like lives with Jane adjacent to Jane. Where do any of them live? I thought they all lived with Tarzan. No, Tarzan has his own house. He's got his own tree fort. Yeah, I thought they lived at the tree fort with him. No, they live in tents. And then Simon lives in that weird like he lives in an airport shanty yeah so they, it's the the continuing adventures and i use that word loosely l- very loosely of these four people three people surrounding tarzan ah where do we even start with this thing? i can so 
I will start by saying we didn't, one, encounter this until earlier today. I woke up way too early and had nothing to do and saw it. I have watched 17 episodes of Tarzan yes. today. The one episode day, twice. The entire day has been spent watching Tarzan. Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan. Now, here's a fun fact. I fucking hate Tarzan. <laughs> I'm a grown-ass man. I don't need any Tarzan. I love this shit. It's inc- You can't stop watching it. Despite the fact that nothing happens. Nothing at all happens. There was four episodes in a row where you couldn't even make a sentence describing the plot because nothing Nothing transpired. And if something transpired, it was like one episode, a kid takes apart his stereo and then gets a new stereo. That's all that happens. That's all that that episode was about. There's one episode where a guy doesn't get treasure. Does it? That's correct. Finds the treasure, does not get treasure. Does not get the treasure. For zero reason. Tarzan's like, nope, you can't have the treasure. That's the jungle's treasure. The jungle's <laughs> treasure. Episode three is Tarzan hands. And it's not like the fucking natives put it there. Like, oh, this is ancient tribal uh, African jungle treasure. A fucking pirate ship crashed into a cave, ejecting a treasure chest and a pirate who died while shitting on top of the treasure. A tiny pirate. A tiny, very tiny pirate. Because a normal-sized human can't make it through the hole that the treasure's in. And a guy wants it. He has every right to it. Doesn't bother to ask Tarzan, like, hey, yeah, I'm here to get this treasure, man. You don't care about treasure. You live in a fucking tree. Uh, but Tarzan's like, you can't have the fucking treasure. You can't have the treasure. That's the jungle's treasure. Yes. It's insanity. I've never, it's also a really weird format. Mm-hmm. It's a format that we don't have in the States really. Cause it's a half hour. Right. Adventure program rather than most adventure programs are one hour adventure. dramas. Right. 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 So it's this weird format. Then nothing happens. Mm-hmm. And it's just, again, it's. It's incompetence is mesmerizing. Uh, 12 episodes of it were directed by Stinker Staple, Brian Trenchard Smith yes. from such uh, episodes as Turkey Shoot. Yes. Uh, we had him on for something else. We did a do and don't on Deadly. Uh, oh, no. Um, the Man from Hong Kong. Oh, The Man from Hong Kong. And then we did a do and don't on Drive Dead End Drive In. Yeah. And uh, Night obviously- of the Living Dead 3. Uh, or Return of the Living Dead 3. Leprechaun 3, he's Leprechaun that as well. 3, he did. And then, uh, of course, the Mad Maxes. Right, right, right. Brian Chandler, yeah. Uh, Australian Aussie genius of uh-huh. making terrible films and terrible TV shows. And only one of the episodes that he directs is eventful. That's how uneventful this series is, is that it even drags Brian Trenchard Smith into half hour episodes where nothing happens. And the event was a lady got sick. Well, he also directed the one with the introduced the main series villain. Oh, oh, the there's a series villain. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the guy from Willow, right? Yes. What's his name? Eric Dan O'Hurley. Uh, oh, I've already forgotten his name. Uh, Darren something. O'Hurley. Yeah, it's O'Hurley. Uh, uh, the the red bearded guy from uh, with the wears a skull on his head and, and Willow. No, he doesn't wear the skull. That's the bad guy. He's Eric Val Kilmer's friend. Oh yeah, Val Kilmer's friend. That's right. Yeah. Okay. He comes in and he's the bad guy Winslow. And in that episode, he does get in a fight with Tarzan. And Tarzan beats him up and blows up his best friend's Jeep. <laughs> that just shows up later in the series like, my Jeep's unblown up, Tarzan. Right. Here it is. Like, we were just going to forget that it got blown up. I guess, had we been watching it on a weekly basis, it's been so long we assume it's a new Jeep. But when you're watching 17 episodes in one day, you go, hey, his Jeep's not blown up anymore. The fun thing I like about this Tarzan episode is at the end, or this show, is at the end of all these episodes. Now, when I say all these episodes and how shitty this show was, there's 70 episodes. They made three seasons of I this shit. I just don't see how it happened. How? I guess they shot it all in one day. Because <laughs> it's all one take acting. It's terrible. Uh, but what I like to do at the end of every episode is ask myself was the world a better place before this episode started (laughs) because it seems to me that tarzan does more bad for humanity and nature and the earth than good it should be called tarzan the collateral damage (laughs) in the the heavy-handed environmental episode he stops polluting the river 
by just openly burning the toxic waste. Right. Like, that he fuck has opened, the air. That he himself has used to defeat the bad guy. Yeah, by dumping it by in the river. By dumping it into the river. Toxic fucking waste. The villain who is polluting the earth, I will end your scheme by making... I'm destroying all of the wildlife. <laughs> now you can't. Yep. I did it for you. And then in another episode, it's actually the same episode where a lady gets sick. Uh, he basically gets his friend killed. Yeah. Because he's too old to go anywhere. <laughs> and so, so he drags and he's cool him. with it. Yeah. Just drags him into the jungle and leaves him there. Right. And he's like, okay, I got to go, man. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's been nice knowing you. Also, this person is wearing a headband made of human teeth. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure he's a cannibal. Yeah. Uh, so that's not real great uh, to be friends with cannibal when you're Tarzan. And then you just kill him by getting this to save your girlfriend, basically, who you refuse to have any sort of adult contact with. Oh, yeah. But if anybody else does, oh, boy. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's bananas. Uh, Tarzan's played by... Uh, Wolf Larson. Uh, from Hard Ticket to Hawaii. And Picasso Trigger. And uh, Andy Sedaris' uh, yes. friend. Yeah. Friend of the program. Friend of the program, yeah. Uh, and then Jane is played by some French lady named- She's a model. I'm not sure what her A-D name is. A.D. Denier, I believe is what her name is. Denier. D- uh, Denier. Denier. Uh, her middle name is Climate Change. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, you'd have to deny it after Tarzan fucks up the jungle right. like that. I'm pretty sure it's, it's not all my boyfriend. It's all his fault. The ice caps, Tarzan. And then his friend, who is a native man of Africa, I'm guessing his character's supposed to be, but he's a part time pilot, part time park ranger, part time cop, part time rebel. Rebel. He's got a squadron leader. Yeah, he's got a. Rogue Squadron jumpsuit in one episode. Another episode, he's Maverick from Top Gun? He has a... He doesn't make any sense. And he never flies his plane. No, it always doesn't work. And his lines are all dubbed by the worst dub that's... Oh, my God. The way that the show works in its incompetence, it's like you see this guy, and his lines were poorly delivered, so they dubbed him. Uh-huh. Which makes it worse. Right. And then they decide to get the guy that they brought in to do the dubbing to be the narrator. <laughs> so it's like we've established what our worst element is, and we're going to add some more of that in. I absolutely love it. Yes. I would also say stop what you're doing. Start with, uh, I haven't seen the first six episodes, but pretty much I I've would seen just everything. start from episode one. There, yeah. Even if you didn't and you started episode six where I made you start. Right. right? There is actually some action in it, but the other episodes, like episode three, I think, is Tarzan hands a man his hard pills. (laughs) (laughs) Here, that's all that happens. God damn it. Didn't you say another episode, the climactic uh, action sequence is a woman goes jogging? A woman goes now in the in the steroid cautionary tale episode. Uh, a woman goes jogging. <laughs> that's the that's the, the climactic action sequence. <laughs> and in, in the same vein of as Ator, it's not boring because there's all this bullshit that's yeah. going around the nothing happening. Uh, uh, love it. And it's filled with just production errors, like where Roger just stabs himself in the <laughs> dick with a tripod and they just have to leave it in because they only got the shot the once. Right, that's all they have time for. Yeah, they recycle sequences constantly. Constantly stock footage out the ass oh. of, of animals. And I will say the cheetah, the the chimpanzee, uh-huh. is a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I like cheetah quite a bit. Yeah. He's cool. It's that level of annoying that becomes cute again. Right, right. Like, wow, this is so annoying, it's hilarious. Yes, uh, he's playing chess for science, and uh, I love bananas because I'm a monkey. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, I plan to uh, watch all of it. <laughs> all 75 episodes <laughs> yeah. of Tarzan. I recommend you do, too. Uh, next week, Sam, it is your pick. Uh, Jackie should be back by then. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, we're in the middle of my remember my basketball run. Yeah, right, right. So I think we're doing Steel with Shaq next. Ooh. Which had we not taken the uh, uh, 
week off, I think we'll, we'll be releasing the Steel episode after Christmas. I think so. Otherwise, it would have been Shaq's Merry Swishmas. Merry Swishmas? Yeah. What movie is that? No, Swish, like basketball. I get it. But... He's just in it. Oh, okay. There's no Christmas in Steel. So it's just a terrible joke that you've told? Swishmas. Swishmas. That's terrible. That's <laughs> it's a, terrible. That's just awful. Diesel trucking. Uh, yeah, uh, enjoy the holidays. Happy holidays to you, especially Donald Trump. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody else. Uh, enjoy time with your friends and family and come back to us for another exciting year of Stinker Madness. Get to the chopper. Visit us at www.stinkermadness.com. Follow Stinker Madness on Twitter at Stinker Madness. Please rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you for listening and get to the chopper. Actually, hold on. I'm going to grab my water and a Ricola just in case. Ricola. Ricola. <laughs> what do you suppose that big ass horn they have is called? I don't know. Because didgeridoos are big ass horns as well, but that's not a didgeridoo. That that goes, Ricola. <laughs> Oi! It's Ricola. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> I'm Brian Trenchard Smith. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> You're so <the> microphone <laughs> <Yeah>. right now. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, Governor. Uh, Wait, what country are you from? They don't have didgeridoos in Ireland. They have leprechauns. <laughs>